Right, so. Take him on top. We're gonna comb everything out nicely forward. And I'm gonna create my guide. I like to use my wide tooth first. It helps me pick up the hair. So as you can see, Tony, right? Yeah. Tony has straight hair, so I could actually just comb it forward and line up my comb, make sure it's in the center, and bring it all over to the side, and I can get a nice, clean section, yeah? Then, we we'll come over, and we can go this way as well. Sometimes, when the hair's short, sections don't stay out of the way, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you see this section, is it too thick? On the limit, On the limit. good. I would actually take it thinner. I want it about a centimetre thick. Otherwise, we're gonna create graduation. All right, and I think that's about a centimetre thick, okay? Lovely. I'm gonna scoop in, and I'm gonna lift it up. Can you see how it was quite easy for me to pick it up with a wire tooth? I'm gonna turn round and I'm gonna go with the fine tooth and I'm gonna lift up like that. I'm gonna probably take off about this much, all right? So I'm gonna start adjusting his shape. So I don't want him to lose too much length. And I'm gonna start. Now, when I cut shape, right, I still keep a static blade. And as you can see, it's my top one cutting. So I'm gonna lie on the base of my finger and I'm gonna cut across. And I'm only cutting with the tip of the scissors, yeah? creates a nice sharp line for me. If I cut with the whole blade, I'm not gonna be able to judge my shape as well. In. Now, from here, I'm gonna lift up my fingers, and again, I'm going to cut across until I run out of hair, and I'm not going to try and pick it up, all right? I'm not gonna try and cut through to the front, because that is his true length. If they can't cut there, there's nothing to be cut. It's been cut too much from before. Or they took the corner out of the fringe and it just merely just doesn't need to be cut. Coming up and just... Lovely. So I've got my nice straight line now, okay? I'm gonna move over to the right. Now I'm gonna show you how to swipe. Who knows how to swipe? Yeah, I'm probably good, right? So with me swiping, right, so you know about sections. The reason sections are so precise is because we structurally take one section, half our previous and our next one, and they're quite fine. So we know that it's gonna be a balanced shape all the way through. Now, with swiping, it's a little bit more difficult because you're not um, taking it section by section. So the way we would do that and make sure it's precise is we take the front first. And I come straight up. Yeah, can you see that? That's coming straight in it. I'm not angled forward and I'm not pulling back. If I pull back, it's gonna create length. If I go forward, it's gonna cut it too short. Make sense? Right, there's nothing here to cut, is there? No, good. So, I'm gonna swipe. Can you see everything over to the side has its own sections? So I'm gonna swipe forward and pick up. And I've, I haven't gone, come back much, have I? No, good. That is what's gonna give me gradual sections back, okay? Again, next, sliding back and coming up again. And if we look, that's my guide. Can everyone see it? Yes. It's not very clear, is it? It's only a tiny little bit coming off. But nonetheless, that is my guide and I'm just cutting up to it. Okay, I'm not cutting past it. I'm not cutting it again. <coughs> Taking another section back. See that? Now, who remembers how much I cut off? 
the beginning. It's just over about a centimeter. Over about a centimeter. Am I cutting that much off now? No. No. So it shows you, just because I cut off a centimeter, don't mean you have to cut a centimeter off the whole head. You do not know what the previous barber has done. You do okay. not know how structured he was to his haircut, how technical he was. So observe your guide and only cut to your guide and what is coming over it. Is that clear? Yeah. yeah? Good. Right. Combing down and just coming up to the apex, okay? Now, you've all been taught to go and push your guide over, right? Mm -hmm. Right, when the hair's short, that can be a little bit difficult. Because when we swipe, and I'll show you. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. My comb's caught, cool. yeah? Mm -hmm. If I comb everything though into my guide, I mean, it's obvious, I know what side I'm cutting, right? Okay. How nice it comes up. It doesn't get tangled, you don't get confused, nothing, right? So, when you are swiping back, you coat everything into the When you're taking sections, you move your guide over. Yeah? Clear? Wicked. So, keeping his head straight now. Now, this is a very important part of the haircut where you have to make sure that his head is straight, all right? Now, remember, we're gonna be moving his head a lot because we are grabbing his head. It's not his fault if the head moves, but it's your fault if you're not observing it, all right? Now, right here, I'm just cleaning off the tips, okay? And then straight back again. Can you see how his head's tilted? Mm. Yeah, and that is because I grabbed the head and I went like that. So I'm going to try to get straight. Coming up. Where's my guide? Point it out to me. Right there, good. Yeah? So I'm going to start from here. And I'm going to retake it up again. Just to make sure I pulled out all the hair properly. Yeah? <laughs> and then coming back. My guy, can you see that's quite a bit more hair on this side? That's because this side was square and the other side was round. Okay, and now we're balancing it out. My guy is there. You can see it from behind and from the top. Put in my bottom blade, I'm resting it slightly on my finger, and I can cut across. Now you can see I'm barely moving back each time. Can anyone tell me roughly, and this isn't a number that I want you to be counting on every head, but roughly how many times did I swipe back? Just five or six. Five or six, yeah. yeah. Obviously depending on how thick it is, it might be six or seven, if it's got really thick hair. Mm -hmm. But it's all about taking it as many precise. What I mean, what I think most barbers do, and not what, what I think, but what most barbers do, maybe do it in three sweeps. Mm -hmm. how, how precise could it possibly be? Because now, if I pick this up, I'm pretty certain it's going to be straight. Okay? Now, taking this middle column, knowing that there's more hair on this side because it's square and it's connected, I'm also going to take now one step to the side and I'm going to take it all over again. I'm going to comb it all over. And bearing in mind now, remember what I said right at the beginning of the haircut? Once I started, what did I do? You identified a disconnect? I, uh, I didn't identify the disconnection, I identified a problem in it though. Do you remember that there was a little hole here? So I'm going to swipe back now through this column again, keeping his head straight. Right, there's nothing to come off because they've actually gone short on this side. Shouldn't have been done round. And actually here it's a little bit longer. 
but can you see like here it's quite oh, yeah, dispersed so yeah so i'm not going to cut that i'm going to keep it in mind and just go over it and let it grow out you okay. said that was with the texturizing right yeah it was texturizing or they might have cut a chunk out i'm, I'm not too sure i can't could have been texturizing scissors i don't know what what okay. these have done last time i can't it's either one of those three right, right? cool all right so we've cut that shape on top now, so I'm going to do the back. But just before I do the back here, I always like to have a look at what I was doing in my consultation was I observing this shape in the mirror, right? And I, if you remember, what did I spot? That his fringe goes down. That his fringe goes down, right? That was, that's what I spotted, something was round. But how, what did I describe to him that I was going to change? What did I describe? I'm going to make a square. Here, and what about the top? Remember that word I used? I think both things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where? There on top. Right? Yeah. All right, let's have a look at the shape now. Bear in mind, didn't cut much off, yeah? Is that there now? No. Is it as bulky? No. Does it have a more structured shape to you? Yeah. yeah look in the mirror. Do me a favor, look in the mirror at it. Um, oh, yeah, along the way. Can you see that? Yeah. Do you see how much a difference it is when you look in the mirror? Yeah, versus yes. Yeah. Like versus this. yeah, because you're looking at it like from there. Right. Yeah. Sure. Good. When you do a mirror, it's giving you that extra little bit of distance as well. Whereas you know, when you see something from a distance, sometimes you can see some sort of little subtle details. Right? All right. So everyone can see now. When you structure cut a top, and you fix these little issues, now he's going to notice that. Why? Because I pointed it out to him. From the off, so he's gonna know. You know what? Because actually, it is nicer shape. He's actually gonna find it easier to start the, the front as well. All right. That's all right. Let's cut the back. Yeah. So we're gonna come from the back here. We're gonna lift up. There we go. And I'm actually gonna do the back slightly round up because it's already quite short in the back. So as you can see, I'm gonna come down in columns, but I'm gonna swipe down in columns, okay? Does that make sense? So you see how I've let go? I'm going to grab it now and I'm going to move over like that. Still following the same angle as his head though, right? Like we would do a round shape. And then without letting go, I'm not going to, I'm not going to swipe across, but I'm going to swipe into that same column just further, further down. See how much I'm cutting off? Hardly nothing, right? For me, I think they've already gone quite short in the back. All right, so I want to maintain the length more than anything. Okay, coming across. You're also cutting around doing the previous haircut, right? And trying to make those. Yeah, I mean, listen, I will do majority of haircuts around at the back. I would say about ninety percent. All right, purely because a square shape gives corners, which give a lot of bulk. How many of you find that your corners here? get too bulky too quickly through your haircut. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. It's because it's a square shape. They've kept it square all the way through. I like to adjust it. Unless he's got really fine hair, it's the only time I would probably do it square. All right? Because you need the bulk to create around the shape. But on a curvature, if you do square and you leave corner in, it's actually going to leave too much bulk and then it's going to have an odd shaped crown rather than a subtle shape. Is that clearer? Yep. Yeah. Barbers do tend to rely on the Guys, please tell me if you don't understand, I'll do my best to rephrase it or reword it in any way. Initially I can. it works, but it grows out horribly. It really grows out See up that? Really, really horribly. Oh, it's a corner there, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah? I use my two short points as my guide, Shut yeah? Do not overdo it. Remember, sometimes less is more. Okay? See how flat is at the back there? Look at what they've done. Yeah, they cut yeah, flat yeah. like that. That's that's no crown. I mean, good guys, but yeah. I, I mean, so what I'm doing is I'm taking this shape here. Cut see how little I'm cutting off, and I'm actually adjusting his shape and making it rounder. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm meeting shorter areas and allowing those to grow through more. If you look at what I'm cutting, I'm purely observing shape. I'm not looking at what, how much I'm cutting off. I'm, I'm looking at the shorter areas or longer areas. 
right, and I'm joining it to a guy, exactly. So his next tech up, when those short areas have come through, that should even be even better then, yeah? It should be even better, exactly. That's why I want to give myself three haircuts to prove to him that I can give him a better shape. But remember, if he's come from somewhere else, you do not know what the previous barber's done. So it may take some going out. But you know what, to me, that is my favorite kind of client because I know I can adjust that shape. And if I know I can achieve it, well, why are they gonna go anywhere else? And it actually gives me a reason to get them back into my seat. And if you can give someone a change, ha, ah, curiosity killed the cat. Yeah, they're gonna be curious to know what you can achieve for that shot. So they're gonna to wanna to come back for those three haircuts. Everyone in this world has an element of vanity. Yeah? It's human nature, we always want to look good. Yeah? And if we can look better, they're going to be curious to see what you can do. All right? So I offer them that change. When a client comes to me, I always, 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 no matter how long I've been doing their hair, I'll always give them a consultation and I'll see if they want to do something else, if they want to achieve something, they want to change their style. It keeps them interested, it keeps my job more entertaining. Yeah, more, uh, it keeps me intrigued in my industry. The last thing you want to do is be cutting the same haircut over and over and over again. You will lose your passion for your job. It will become boring. And that is purely down to you because your client is not the one that should be coming and explaining to you exactly what they want. They might say, I want to do something different. And sometimes, don't get it twisted, <laughs> different things do not have to be massively yeah, funky changes. Yeah. It's subtle changes. <laughs> Little subtle things. You see this thing I'm doing with the crown? That is a very big change for someone. Yeah, it's tiny what we do, but for him, that could probably make the world's difference. <laughs> because these little corners here, by taking them out, it will add two weeks to your hair cut. Yeah, before it really starts to lose its shape. Do you know how much appre how appreciative he would be of that? You're making him look good for an extra two weeks. Yeah. Right. Lovely. So we have now cut the back. What comes next? <coughs> now, connecting right is only done if there is enough to connect. Okay? The reason we know, uh, the way we know if it's enough to connect is intruding out of your fingers more than a centimeter or a centimeter and a half to an inch. Okay? So if I go like that, okay. That, I would say it's just about enough. But you saw how square I came with the clippers. I want you lot to come and have a real close look now, okay? So I want everyone one by one to come very close. And I actually want you to look at the hair coming out of my finger and you tell me the shape. Uh, a bit of water, I've got a bottle of these. And bed brush is better guys, Devon is obviously good, but you do all have a bed brush. What can you see there? Okay, it looks like this. Good, bingo. Right, I don't expect you lot to know why that is, okay, so I'm going to explain it to you. The previous person that cut his hair, right, connected like this. Yeah? Right. No, look at the angle of my fingers. Like that, innit? Should be square, that is a connection, because your clippers have come up straight. Yeah? And you're connecting anything overlapping that. If you connect like this, then you're cutting into his layering. And that is actually why this became so steep into the, into the top of the head. That exactly. So, what would I do? Am I going to follow that shape now? No. Again, it comes to the same point of adjusting the shape now, manipulating it, allowing that bit that has been taken in to grow out. This is why it's going to come back to me a second time, because right now, I'm just refining the structure. Or, sorry, I'm just correcting the structure. The next two haircuts are going to be me refining it, perfecting it, allowing, uh, make, uh, taking those bits that are growing out and putting them back into the haircut, okay? 
<coughs> right, so I'm going to start from the front. And I'm going to work from here. And if you see, I'm going to come from the base of where my guide is. You see how square that is? Look at my fingers. Look at my elbow. All right, and I want everyone to really look at my elbow. Do I look comfortable when I'm cutting? No, do I look professional? Yeah. All right, can you see the fine difference there? What is it? If you're comfortable, you're looking professional. Good. Yeah? I like that. Thank you. It is all about the body positioning. My elbow is what is coming up straight to connect in the haircut and make sure that I'm giving them the correct shape, okay? I'm going to put you another way, that was brilliant. But comfortable looks lazy, yeah? If I have my elbow drop, I'm like this. That look good? No, I think that's pretty poor, yeah? So, we lift that elbow up and we are correct, we have good posture, all right? It helps us create a great haircut and it makes us look professional as well, all right? Makes a client that you know what this is is on point. Okay. Yeah. This guy this guy yes. knows what he's looking for. Okay? Right. Now we come back to the side to the back of the head. Nothing to connect there. Too short to connect. Yeah? Now why would I not get that? It is actually protruding out of my fingers a tiny bit, but that's not a centimetre, is it? What's going to happen if I connect that in my fingers? It's going to look like a line. Maybe not a flat bit, but you're close. It's going to create knuckle marks. It's going to create imperfections. It is too short to create a precise section. So you're going to be grabbing hair. Look. From both ends. So what happens? I'm going to be cutting the middle of that and it's going to create a concave shape going to create knuckle marks, okay? When we come to this side, no connection, why? It's disconnected, good, right. Now if I show you, yeah, it's not perfect, but already, since we adjusted his shape, come over, and you're going to notice this, because you were standing here before, weren't you? At the beginning of my consultation, all that side, I think you lot were, all right. What did I say about this? Because of the imperfection, what happened? Because of that hole that they put there? What was happening to that? Come forward with it? It was dropping, yeah. exactly. But now, since I've structured that shape and we've kept it much squarer, you can see it wants to sit over more. But it still needs time to add the shape back in. All right? So, imagine the next haircut, how nicely that's going to be sitting. Yeah? All right, good. Lovely, so we have connected, we have cut the top, the shape, everything. What, what's next in the haircut? Oh, finishing. Finishing, good. What part of the finishing? Texture. Texture. What comes before that? Fine and scissor over that. Oh, We've done the outriding, remember? Yeah, you're right, you're right. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, after that though. All right, well, one, one quick question. All right, how do we rough dry? Good. Facing downwards. I want all the hair lying in its natural state. What I don't want to see is this going upwards. Everything must go down towards the crown. So that allows the hair to spread evenly through the crown, allow the crown to sit down, allow the side to sit, and the front. Okay? And what I'm going to do. Is I'm just using the tips of my fingers, okay? I don't want to put this, my whole palm in this head, all right? That is not comfortable for them, all right? We're going to continue to move in this head. We use our, our fingertip very lightly, and the only thing that they are doing is splitting the hair and allowing the air flow to go through it, okay? Right. It is now rough dry, okay? 
The bit that comes next is the grade above the higher grade. Yeah? So we're going to use our number four. And we, uh, yeah, our number four. And we are going to downgrade to after it. Alright? So when we downgrade, what part of the clipper work are we cutting? We're cutting the section above, okay? Which means when I place my clippers. We start from mid fade, all right? Start from here, and if I start from here, I am forced to pick up the hair. That is protruding. If I start from underneath, I will come off the haircut way too early. So, we start from mid, and we come off that section straight away, floating up. All the way through. Again, I'm going to start from the mid part of the head. Right guys, our, our models are here for half past, so grab yourself a five minute break, go to the loo, have a fag, whatever it is, be back in five minutes please. Yes. Can you see from this half of the head, come stand around here guys. And have a look at the shape, look at the outline of it. It's taken away that bulky bit, okay? Carry on round. <laughs> Tilting his head down if I need to. Always using my finger to create the tension and coming up halfway through the head. See my shape refining, yeah? Good. Now I'm gonna take my number three. I'm gonna put it to a three and a half and I'm gonna repeat the whole process again. Starting from mid midway up the head, coming back round. So number three again, yeah? Number three and a half. Yeah, I put the three guard on it and I moved it to the half. See this line above? Yeah. I'm not trying to get it, okay? I'm not going out of my way to really try and grab it. I'm starting from underneath, midway, and I'm, whatever I collect, whatever I smooth, it will smooth, okay? Because you've got to remember, you still have to do this your own coat, yeah? So, if I look in the mirror and I see my shape, I think that's pretty square now. It's taken away that little bulky bit, hasn't it? Do you want to have a look? Yeah. yeah? It's yeah. taken away that bulk now, okay? Yeah. All our techniques are precise, they need to be done, okay? See here? This is my guide from above. That is one of his overcoat. You can see it will never pick it up. It's over the curve, just going to push it out of the way. All right? Lovely. So now I've got my high grade. Now I do scissor over coat. Okay? So I'm going to start on my connected area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the direction of the hair. And we have, remember, static blade. All right? Turn it down. Starting from the base. 
and I want to work my way up. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to float up off the curvature of the head. And you can really see my shape. Um, Again, starting from the base, working our way up. Now, when we float up with scissor over comb, that is only one technique of scissor over comb. And that technique is used to take out a ridge, anything protruding off my square shape, okay? Then, I'm going to do that all the way around first, okay? As you can see, my blade is always static, yeah? That static blade is lined up with the base of my comb, okay? The base of my comb is what dictates to me what I'm cutting, all right? So, as you can see over here, I start from the base, I'm gonna float up, I'm coming off the most protruding part, the same, the same place I came off with my, with my clippers. And then my comb dictates when I stop is when I run out of hair. Correct? If I start from the base, I'm not necessarily cutting anything. But what's going to happen is my comb is going to come up, is going to find the hair that becomes more protruding. My scissors will naturally cut it. Okay? But by starting from the base, I'm merging in smoothly and blending. All right? And is the, is the comb coming up square? Yes. Remember, I'm taking out the ridge at the moment, okay? Right, so here, I'm going to come up this way. I'm coming forward, really seeing how it's sitting. Beautiful. Right. Now, I'm going to move to my second part of the scissor over comb. Yeah? And that is me creating my shape now. Now, when, I want to, when I've got a square shape, I push the base of the comb around the head. All right? So, got his head straight. In fact, I can only do this on one side with him. So, I want everyone to really watch this side, okay? So, I'm going to tilt his head. I'm going to keep his head straight. Combing down, resetting. I'm going to start from the base here. Scoop in. And as I come around, watch, I'm pushing the base around the head. From here, and I'm pushing the base around the head. From here, and I'm pushing the base around the head. All right? The base pushed around the head is creating my shape. And if you see, watch, I go round, and look where it runs out of hair for me. All right, it pushes the hair out of the way. It's dictating to me what I'm cutting and what I'm not cutting. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, to create a round shape, which is what I did at the back, right? So I'm gonna change my technique now, and I'm gonna move on to round, okay? And when I've got round, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing still around the head, but I'm using a different shape of the comb. Okay, so this bit, I call it the flat part of the comb, yeah? So the, the whole comb. And I'm pushing it around the head, okay? So I'm following. So some people, I don't know if you've heard anyone say, well, follow the teeth around the head, push the teeth down around the head. This is what they mean. We're keeping the flat bit of the comb on and we push everything around the head like that. Can you see I run out of hair further in? But I'm still running out of hair. So and that is creating my round shape. Alright? And I'm gonna do this through the crown. Like that. 
this way around the crown. Now, when I get to the back, because I don't want to cut too much of the crown off, I'm going to keep my cone square. I'm going to start down, put his head down slightly. We're going to come up and we're going to push the base around the head. And then pushing, I'm moving, now just into my round technique. And pushing it around like that. Again, round technique, and I'm pushing around. There we go. Now, if we look at his hair cut from the side, because he's not got a nicer shape through the back now. Yeah, can you see how subtle it will change? I didn't cut off much, but I've adjusted his shape. Less is more. Right, now, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna push my base around with this connection ever so slightly, just to smooth it and keep it square. All right. Making sure I get the temple area. Always refine your temple area and go over it. Because that is a hairline nonetheless, and it does tend to get bulky there. Right, one more thing we're gonna do is just texturize. A quick question. Yes. For me. When you push the base of the cone, do you have to learn the teeth out to keep it square manually? Or? So watch, come around. I start from the base, my curvature is there, my comb just goes round, so my teeth are always pointing up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure. Fringe. And if I look down, this fringe is quite stubborn, so I'm going to freehand it, okay? And we are going to carve just the tips off. And we always point cut our fringe. And because he wears it to the side, the previous barber. Cut it diagonally, but I disagree with that because your hair is going to flow to the side on the left. You don't want to create extra length there. Lovely. So we've cut the fringe. I'm going to lift his hair up, starting from the centre column, and we are going to texturise. Always going directly based on from what coming from what's coming out of your fingers. Around, taking my next column now. Can you see my fingers right? Deep into Sorry, his root as close as possible to his scalp because I want everything to protrude out of my fingers uh, for my scissors to go as deep into my fingers as possible. I do not texturize the tips. Coming straight back. And then my next column across, you can see I've worked very methodically, okay, just to make sure that I don't over texturize anything. I don't overcut anything, okay? Lovely. And this, guys, is his haircut done. Lovely. Now, if someone could get me the matte paste, matte head. So, all we're going to do is we're going to blow all the hair off for him. Now, what I like to do there when I style it, 
is I want to try and make it as easy as possible for them. Yeah? Because what is the likeliness of them leafing their hair or using a round brush? They're going to find it difficult, right? So, it's quite easy. Who's got a nozzle? Uh, or structure wax. Wicked, thank you. Right, so it's a quite easy thing, okay? I want to make it as easy as possible for them. Now, heat. Uh, breaks your bonds, softens your bonds, makes it easy to manipulate, and cold stiffens them, but makes it um, set into place, right? So quite easily, I'm going to take my hair dryer. So this is what I want you to do to your hair, okay? When you're styling it, just to make it a bit easier for you, I want you to use hot air, just through the front. Remember, we already rough dried it down. Just need to focus on the front, and just blast the hot air on your root up like that, okay? You can use your hand as well slightly if you want. Okay, so it stays up. Then use cold air straight away. And the cold air will help it set up so it should stop your hair from falling down, okay? I would use about this is a great product for you if you like. If you like, it's a matte finish. You don't need a lot. Rub it into your hands really well until it disappears. And then, just rub a little bit through the back there, just to add a bit of mess. And then, then come and just apply it through the front. Now, the reason I applied it through the back first is because I don't want to overload the front with product, yeah? Reduce the amount of product in your hand. It needs to go all over the head, so start from the back. And then, you can finish off with the back as well. There we go. Get his hair down, a bit flatten it, add a bit of texture. How's that feeling for you, sir? Yeah? Can you see the difference in the shape? Do you find that this is a bit more shape for you now? Yeah. Looks good. Looks good. Well, in the next haircut, it will be even better and we can really perfect the shape for you, okay? I'll say maybe, maybe about four weeks. Three to four weeks. Okay? Thank you. And then, just to finish it off, I'm going to blast it with a bit of spray. Get all of that up, all the little wispy bits. And he's all done. Can I have a mirror? I think they're over there, maybe I'm not sure. Thank you, sir. Show him the back now. When we show the back, all right? This. Sorry, Rich. This doesn't work, okay? All right? Go right to the head. If you can see it, you can see it. So I'll go up there. Yeah. And up the back, and you can show them the sides as well. So, how's that, sir? Thank you very much. Take your gown off. Before you take it fully off the head, just make sure you get all the hair out so. It doesn't go down the back. There we go. Let's take it starving. Beautiful. And that's it. Done. Now remember, just turn your chair out because you do have wires easy for safety. You don't want it to trip up, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You have a great day, yeah? Thank you.